back in April of 2022, I did a blog post and it's posted on the Center for Biblical Unity website. It's called, Which BIPOC Voices Should I Follow? And the acronym of BIPOC refers to Black Indigenous People of Color. And this was really my first attempt to try to explain what I see happening in a lot of Christian spaces and that there are really two models of race and racism. And it was prompted by a tweet that caught my attention. It was asking the question, who are the Christian BIPOC voices that you look to for wisdom and truth on the regular, both here and on Instagram? And I want to show you the the responses. So this is an example, number one, of the responses. And it was people like Esau McCauley and Eric Mason, Charlie Dates, Mika Edmondson, Christina Edmondson, um, Akemini Uwan, Kyle James Howard, and um, Dante Stewart. So this is just a few. You can see their Twitter handles here. But then there were other posts that had names like this of Bodie Bauckham and Sam Say and Daryl Harrison and Virgil Walker and um, Monique Dusan and Ariel Bovat, and Neil Shenvey and Delano Squires. These are two very different lists. And in this post, what I attempt to outline is kind of 10 questions that are being asked in public spaces. And then I share that really there are two models out there in churches, Christian schools, um, Christian ministries, when it comes to race and racism. Not all Christians see these matters the same way. And that we need a competition of ideas in order to, to measure out, you know, which is biblically faithful and to sharpen one another. I, I have learned a lot by listening to people on the other side of the conversation. They've challenged me some things I would agree with them on, and there's many things that I disagree with them on. I, some some of them I, I would consider their beliefs heterodox, and and but I, I you know I still see them. I try to see them as brothers and sisters in Christ in most cases. But some of the questions that we might answer, you know, what is race? What is racism? What is the fundamental problem behind racial division? Who can be racist? And I went through this blog post and I just tried to answer the question according to both models, okay? Now, the model that Monique and I hold to, we call the biblical unity model. The racial reconciliation model is a different model. And I would encourage you to go check out the blog post if you want to have a summary on both of the models. But the reason I'm doing this is because many people just, Christians just go to a website and they start using the resources because the website is a Christian website. They just think the perspective must be Christian, not knowing, not being aware that there are actually two models floating around our churches, Christian schools, and ministries. But I think what you, what I want you to understand is that there are these two models that are floating around Christian spaces when it comes to talking about race and racism, the racial reconciliation model and the biblical unity model. All right. There are two sets of voices. So just saying what people of color should I follow is not the right question. The issue is not listening to people of color. The issue is listening to people of color who have a certain one particular point of view on the conversation about race and racism. One view is favored. And if that's your view too, then cool. That's your view. I just want people to be aware and have a level of understanding to recognize these words, to recognize when the racial reconciliation model is in view, and to build out the concerns that Monique and I and Elisa and Natasha have and again, these are our opinions. This is analysis. You have to do your own research and study about these issues. And I encourage you to do that. I'm going to give you one more brief case study. And that is Right Now Media. I don't know if you're familiar with Right Now Media, but a lot of churches have subscriptions to this service that is called Right Now Media. And right now, media bills itself as sort of a Christian Netflix. I don't know if that's the 
best way to, to think about it, but it does provide a lot of content for churches and small groups, um, teaching that people can use instantaneously in their small groups. Your church gets the subscription and you can just browse your life away <laughs> with um, teaching. And you can see some of the people they've got here, J.D. Greer, um, Dr. Tony Evans, Francis Chan, Jenny Allen. Jenny Allen, I believe, is the founder of the If Gathering and all of that. Okay. But what we have to know here is that when it comes to the race conversation, there, there first of all, there's a lot of good content on Right Now Media. My friend Natasha Crane is on there. Our friend Jim Wallace is on there, the cold case detective. So I'm not here to pan all the content on Right Now Media as being some how heterodox or or you know unsound some of it is sound but again here's where you have to use discernment and when it comes to the race conversation they are featuring only pretty much one side of the conversation here's be the bridge again latasha morrison is this looking familiar jamar tisby the color of compromise they have his whole series on there again one side of the conversation his second book, How to Fight Racism, is also on there. And he's in the racial reconciliation stream. And in my opinion, he he used to work for Abraham X. Kendi briefly for about a year. But, um, you know, he is pushing kind of a Christian version of anti-racism. Uh, Brian Loritz, also a frequent speaker at Biola, um, was on staff at J.D. Greer's church. Here, Matt Chandler is also featured promoting his series. Brian Loritz is very similar to Al Tate. Um, but this, you, you're not going to find on here Monique Toussaint or the Just Thinking podcast or Sam Say. These mega platforms are not platforming the biblical unity side of the conversation. They make it appear as though the Christian position is the reconciliation racial reconciliation side of the conversation. When, truth of fact, there is a different model. There is a second model. And that is really what our book is about at the Center for Biblical Unity. Our book is to highlight these two models and to try to begin to build our case for what we call biblical unity. Now, Monique and I want to encourage you, if you want to go on Amazon, you can find our book. It's already available on pre-order. The reason I want to point this out is because so many people, so many Christian leaders aren't even aware that there are two models. And we go through the common questions on race and racism related to that. And we answer them both from both models. We do our best. It's not perfect, but it, we're trying to change the conversation. Because as of right now, oftentimes only one side of the discussion is featured. And as a result, many people think there is only one side of the conversation, that racial reconciliation is the biblical view. With that, I hope you found this teaching helpful and practical. Um, and the, I hope also you'll consider pre-ordering our book, Walking in Unity, Biblical Answers to Questions About Race and Racism.